David wins the battle. Eliab don't get his bread and his cheese no more. You won't, you won't get your cheese no more. <laughs> I won't have my ride to the club. <laughs> I won't get my beer money no more. I can't call and sulk on your shoulder when I feel like when when my when my husband finds out that I'm having an affair on him, who who's gonna cover for me when I go to the motel? <laughs> Amen. I love that God is good. I'm going to write a whole message on that one. We know the story from here. They overheard, they overheard David and took him to Saul where he told him how he had defeated the lion and the bear. He grabbed it by the beard and killed it. Saul tried to put his armor on David and David wouldn't use it. Instead, David got his staff and his sling and he headed out to battle. He used what he had. We worry about what everybody else has got, and we try to use what everybody else has got. You try to use the giftings the preacher has. My giftings ain't your giftings. You've got to use what you've got. You've got to use what you know. Because the Lord will not put no more on you than you can bear. And the Lord will not... In you believe that? So if he's not going to put no more on you than you can bear, then you know what that means? He's done equipped you with everything you need to get out of the mess you're in. Amen. So quit trying to use mine because you think you got to have mine. You ain't got to have mine. He's done give you yours. Use what you've got. In 1 Samuel 16, 15 through 18, the Spirit of God had left Saul in a spirit, and a spirit came to trouble him, and they were looking for someone to play music for him to, for, for him to calm him down. One of his servants said, Jesse had a son that is cunning and playing the harp, a valiant, brave man, a man of war, and a prudent in matters. He was a good businessman, and a calmly, he was a good-looking person. And the Lord is with him. Don't forget the anointing. Amen? He used what he had. Use what you've got. He was a good musician. He was valiant, or he was brave. He was prudent in matters. He was a smart businessman. He was good looking. You should. I'm not even going to go down that road. Don't forget the anointing. David knew he was anointed. David knew that he had the gift. David picked up five stones and went to battle. Why did he get five stones? Philistia had five cities Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron, and Gath. Amen? Five cities five stones. His five stones was symbolic to the defeating of the five cities of Goliath or five cities of Philistia. Amen? Number one, he hit Gath. First and foremost, he hit it. You know what he did? He prophetically in the spirit world, he picked up five stones. I'm going to defeat all of them, but I'm starting with the one. He was only fighting one. The, he, was only fighting the, or the, he was only fighting the Goliath from Gath. Picked up five. I'm not going to stop with the one. I'm going to defeat all five. You know what happens to us? We got one problem. We pick up one stone. You got more than one problem. Figure it out what it is. Pick up five stones. Pick up ten stones. Whatever many stones you need, start with one. Don't sling all of them at the same time. Sling one and defeat one of them. But be prophetically knowing that I'm going to kill the one and I'm going to have four more left in my pouch to get the other four that I'm dealing with. He picked up five stones, killed with one, had four more. Prophetically known. We're not going to get just the drug, we're not just going to get the drug addicts saved, we're going to get the drug dealers saved. I'm going to pick up five stones. I'm going to pick it up right now. I'm going to pick up two of them right now. We're going to get the drug user and the drug dealer. Right there's two stones. I'm putting them in my pocket. We're going to get the pimp and the prostitute. There's two more I'm putting them in my pocket. We're going to get the person that's backslidden and I'm going to put them in my pocket. We're going to... If I have to, by golly, I'm going to carry me a bucket of stones around. I'm going to get the bucket and say, we're going after all of this. We're going to dump you out. We're going to dump them all over your head, devil. I got a bucket full of rocks here. And every one of them represents something that's defeating our community. And I'm winning our prophet prophetically right now. Prophetically right now. You know what we need to do?
We need to come down here on the next pretty Wednesday we got. I'm speaking this into existence right now. We need to walk this property and we need to start picking up rocks. And every one of them rocks needs to represent something that we're going that we're going to defeat. We need to walk this property and we need to pick up rocks. Not big huge rocks. I'm not talking boulders unless you want to pick them up. We need them picked up. Hey Amen. So we can mow a little bit easier. We're going to pick up rocks. And each one of them rocks, we're going to put something on it. And we're going to pile them. We're going to pile them up. We're going to pile them up. We're going to move this flower pot right over here and we're going to build us a stone pile. Somewhere we're going to build us a stone pile. If it's right over here, it's one, and right over here is another. We're going to pile them. We're going to pile them rocks up here prophetically. Adultery, we're going to put a rock over here. Fornication, we're going to put a rock over here. Drug use, we're going to put a rock over here. Meth addiction, we're going to put a rock. We're going to put a rock out here. We're going to pick, oh, just as David, I'm feeling good. Oh, just as David picked up five that represented five enemies, we're going to pick up as many rocks as we can find, and we're going to label them rocks, something that's going to be defeated. And we're going to... Mm, and we're getting, I'm feeling anointing of God all over this right here. And we're going to stack them up and we're going to defeat every single one of them. Because prophetically, the spirit of the Lord was on David. And he said, gather five and defeat the five cities of Felicia. He said, so you need to get. So we're going to pick up five rocks. We're going to pick up 50 rocks. We're going to pick up 500 rocks. We're just going to start naming. We're going to start labeling. And we're going to start stacking them. And we're going to claim that God is going to use that rock to bury it in the head of the enemy. And we're going to defeat that enemy right where he stands. Amen. The Lord just told me if our church is going to be victorious and going to overcome this slump we're in, we've got to gather these rocks. We're going to have to gather these rocks. This is what, this is, this, mm, 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 mm. so the day we start gathering rocks, we may do it on a Sunday so everybody can be here. I want Mikey to pick up rocks, amen. I want Glenn and Carlos to pick up rocks. I want the whole church to pick up. We may have a rock gathering service in the next couple of weeks. People are going to think, people, mm, people are going to drive by and say, that church is crazy. They out in the yard, pick up we're just the crazy enough to go out in here and declare that it's warfare. There ain't nobody else going to do it. There ain't nobody else going to worry about it. The rest of them can have the little parties and the little cookouts. They can have the rest of their stuff all year long, and they cannot fight the enemy. We'll get, listen, they can shake and tremble when it happens, but I'm telling you now. Let them shake and tremble. I stand up and say, who is this? Uncircumcised Philistine. <laughs> Grab all of it you can, baby. We're going to wear out the devil. Hmm. Let them tremble and hide behind the rock. We'll pick a rock up and throw it at the devil. Who is this son? Circumcised spirit of homosexuality. We're going to split your head. Mm. Mm. Let them hide and tremble. We're going to go to war. We're going to put it in our sling. Mm. Mm. And then when we cut off his head, hey, I'm telling you. When we split his head with the rock, mm, we're going to use the very word against him. If we serve notice on you now, devil. <laughs> oh, Let him. All I can say is tremble, baby. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this that dares defy the armies of the living God? Hmm. We 
We're going to have a stone gathering party. Oh, cut shit at him. We're going to kill it. You come to me with a spear and a sword, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Let them think you're crazy. I say we pick up a rock. I say we pick up a rock. I say we pick up a rock. The Lord didn't put us in this stony ground for nothing. He didn't put us on this stony property for nothing, brother. He put us here so we could pick up some rocks and so we could kill some devils. Oh. You can sit down. Be seated, be seated. Oh my God, you're wearing me out. Oh God, I love it. Yes. David picked up five stones, went to battle. Don't just stop with defeating one thing in your life. Prepare yourself for success. Prepare yourself for success. After confronting Goliath and declaring victory and turning his own words on him, David killed him with a stone and then cut his head off to give no chance. This is the kill. This is the kicker right here. To give no chance for resurrection. Knocked him out with a stone and cut his head off. No chance for him to patch himself up and get up again. When you hit that enemy in the head with the rock, cut his head off. It's not just a fact to go out here and preach the word to him. We got to get him saved and cut the head of the enemy off. Mm-hmm. Finalize the deal. Finalize it. Let's not just get them saved. Let's finalize the deal. Let's not just get them to church. Let's get them saved. Let's get them then. You knew it was coming. Let's get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's finalize the deal. So once you go Pentecost, you never go back. Oh, gosh, I'm feeling good. The key to the whole deal, the key to the whole deal, one for all and all for one. David standing and defeating Goliath rallied the troops. It stirred up victory inside those that fell to defeat. If you notice what happened, the Bible says when David killed Goliath, the whole army went. Did you see that? He killed Goliath. What was we waiting for? When you defeat that devil in your life, somebody's going to look at you and go, is that it? What was I waiting for? I've struggled with this for months. And that's all it takes is giving it all to Jesus. Giving it all to Jesus. Is that all it takes? It rallied the troops, one for all and all for one. David said, a lot of us act, a lot of folks act, based on the number of people that go with them. Mm -hmm. Well, what if only one? What if only two? What if only three? What if? David was one man. And David went alone. Why? David had the anointing with him. And what happened after David did that? The rest of the army followed him. So when you are waiting on everybody else to come and help you, defeat that thing in your life, everybody else is waiting on you to defeat that thing to rally them up. One for all. David didn't care. David knew who his help was. He knew where his help came from. So David went to battle. And what happened? David knew that Goliath was defeated. Who's this uncircumcised Philistine dare defies the armies of the living God? I'll cut his head off when the sucker comes out here. I'm not a bit afraid of him. Come on. You might walk over, but you're limping back. Amen. You might walk over, but you're crawling back, sucker. Come on. Come on, Goliath, come on. David wasn't afraid. Was that so tough? One of me. 
and he's 13 foot tall and I'm five foot. His armor weighs twice as much as I do. Let alone how much he weighs. Sucker probably weighed 400 pounds. He's huge. He had a helmet that was make our heads go, we'd look like a bobblehead. His spear was, it was about, oh, 15 pound spears, nothing. You try to throw, if you grab 15 pound barbell, little dumbbell in your hand, try to do 15 pounds a couple times, you'll be going, oh my God. You don't think 15 pounds is a lot until you move it. Oh, he had a big, huge, so we could have swelled up. Yeah, sure, his shield was 30 pounds. And that all you he gave it was, and that's all you was waiting. David rallied the troops. So one for all, he didn't wait on everybody else. He did it because in himself, I feel in himself, he knew that when he defeated Goliath, it would stir the people up that were around him. People are waiting on you, saints. I hate to put the pressure on you, but there's people in your life that are waiting on you. They're watching you. They're waiting on you. I got people watching me. I'm the preacher. They're going to watch me. A lot of people expect me to fail. A lot of people expect me to succeed. I got every opportunity in the world to give up and quit. But you know what? I've got a lot of people to prove wrong. And I... All right, listen, I'll prove you wrong. You tell me I ain't going to do it, I will bend over backwards to do what you tell me I'm not going to. You tell me I'm going to shut the doors and move back to my old building, you know what I say? I'm still here. I'm going to run off of some 16-year-old girl and leave my wife. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm still here, and we're still married. Better than ever. Amen. Oh, he'll have to close the doors and go back and start all over. Tell me the shape of your family. I've stayed true to what God called me to do. Regardless of times that I've cried, begged God, please move me. Please, I sat down here the other day, me and God had a long heart to heart talk. Have you ever had them points where you just stand and yell at God? I've stood and I've just switched my fist many times. God, why? You think there was times David didn't sit out in that field, pasture field with them sheep, and his brothers living at home with daddy and him forgotten son because he was a product of an affair? product of an affair. The rest of them were dark skinned, dark haired. He was a red headed white boy. Tell me that that wasn't something uh, fishy. <laughs> Amen. That'd be like my mom giving birth to Ricky. <laughs> and then claiming that we came from the same daddy. That don't happen. Amen. That'd be like my dad saying. This is your brother. And him look like Ricky. We had to come from different mamas. Right? So that was David. Where's your other boy? Don't you have another one? Uh, yeah, he's out there in the backfield. Rest of them stood up there and was dark haired, dark skinned. Here comes this red headed, freckled white boy. Brother from another mother, you reckon? No wonder he kept him hid. Amen. Sometimes you feel that way. Sometimes you feel that way. You know, a lot of you today, today's Father's Day, man. Today's the day that, and I'm thankful today. I love, I, I love being a dad. Nothing no greater than being a dad. I mean, unless you're a mother. And then you say nothing better than being a mother. I don't know what it's like to be a mother. There's nothing greater than being a dad. 
It's wonderful. My kids look at me. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. It's just great. It's a great feeling. How somebody could not want to hear them words? Happy Father's Day. Oh, it's just awesome. It just, it's just wonderful. I love it. But you know what? It's one for all, for them two and my wife. And it's all, it's them three for me. It's Ed who didn't have, who didn't have to choose to be a dad, but yet he's chose. I've been on the lake more with that man than I ever have with my dad. We rode around the boat yesterday, and he don't know how much that means to me. He don't know what it means to push that boat out and get in that little bitty boat and run down the lake. And it just, to me, that means more than anything. Because I never had that. And you know what? He chose to do that. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. But he chose to do that. And I'm thankful today that he chose to do that. Stand on the canal bank with a brother of mine this morning. That didn't have to be a good friend of mine. Didn't have to be an influence in my life, but he chose to. He don't know how much that meant to me. To him, he, he about shouted the place down. I, you'd have thought the Holy Ghost fell over when I caught that little fish. I'd have thought he was ready to speak in tongues. Right there in the middle of that. Oh, he caught a fish. I thought for sure the Holy Ghost had failed. Well, he don't know how much that means to me. Oh, sure, it might have been something great to him, but to me it was just... It's wonderful to me. We took that little boat out yesterday and sat there on that lake and it quiet and still. Too bad we didn't have our fishing poles. You know, it's kind of crazy going out on a boat without your poles, but we did. We could have snuck in a couple of casts anyway. I'd have caught a big stick. But I'm thankful. I love them. I love them to death. And I am thankful. So I'm just so thankful today. But it's one for all. It's one for all. It's one for all. Johnny does the best raising his boys that he can, a single dad. A single dad. Trying to raise two boys. Dealing with the loss of a mother. Dealing with dealing with everything he's dealing with. It's one for for all. And it should be, and I hope it is, all for one. I hope it is. I hope it's John and Kevin saying, I'm with the best interest for my dad. When dad's gone, I'm going to get up and I'm going to make sure when dad comes home that dad can come into a nice, peaceable, clean home. Amen. Dad can come into two boys that ain't going to be that ain't going to be causing no grief because he's worked hard all day. Amen. Glenn is one for all and all for one. Carlos is all. Listen, Glenn puts himself in jeopardy every day for people. Patience, he gets in that ambulance and goes and he don't ever know what he's going into. He don't ever know what he's got to deal with, but it's one for all those people and then he's got a family that's got his back, a church pope that's got his, that's got his back. Carlos drives every day to Knoxville to take care of patients. It's one for all. His family's got his back, and we've got their back. And when you all defeat something in your life, you rally the rest of us. You rally the rest of us. You stir the rest of us. When we see Sister Tina get blessed and smile on her face and countenance change, we... We go after them. When we see Sister Mary shouting down and making her choo-choo train, we know that the devil's in trouble. When we see Sister Brooke get happy and shout, it rallies the rest of us. It rallies us. It stirs our spirit. We see Sister Hannah getting blessed. It stirs her. Why do you think it's important? Because we're defeating the Goliaths. Amen. I've got my two services out of you. Good deal. 
Go ahead and stand to your feet. Put on some music if you would, brother. When you stand, when you take a stand and conquer the enemy, it will spark a fire in those around you. David was anointed to lead. He was chosen by God to lead his people, and the soldiers noticed something in him that day when he defeated the enemy.